Good evening, welcome to the Pandemic Podcast. Conspiracy theorists speaking in Parliament today. This evening as we speak, five o'clock this evening in London, Andrew Bridgen is hosting a debate with Drs. Robert Malone, uh, Steve Kirsch, Dr. Pierre Corey, Dr. David Martin, Professor uh, Angus Dalgleish, and Dr. Ryan Cole from the United States. Now, this debate is a two-hour session running from 5 p.m. till 7 p.m., looking at some of the key issues from the last couple of years, but primarily focusing on the harms caused by the um, medical interventions, which uh, shall not be named for censorship purposes, but I'm sure you can guess. Um, Robert Malone is going to be talking about his background in the research around mRNA um, interventions. And the other doctors are going to be sharing evidence around the suppression of medical evidence, censorship of, of key data, and uh, the entire funding circle behind uh, what's happened over the last few years. Now, the specific nature of the details of the discussion tonight aren't available right now. Um, it, I don't believe it's being broadcast. Uh, I tried to get access to the session this evening to be able to bring you full information, but I'm not able, uh, to, wasn't able to get there. So, um, what I do know is that this is an important breakthrough. Uh, we've seen discussions like this happen in the European Parliament. We've seen them happen in other parts of the world. And whilst they may have fallen on deaf ears, the hard reality is we are now seeing on public record uh, testimony from. Uh, esteemed scientists and people who are laying their careers on the line to expose the realities of what's gone before us. Now, of course, already the charade has begun with people labeling those giving evidence as conspiracy theorists and spreading misinformation. You know, if by now you can't see behind, uh, you know, see beyond that rodeo, the circus of the usual swarm of the same people and the same publications smearing all of this as the same things, right-wing conspiracy theorists, then you probably need a medical checkup yourself, <laughs> or at least a psychological evaluation. And if you haven't noticed in your own friendship group, your families and your peers, that there is this upshot in illnesses and unknown uh, uh, health events, you're not asking questions yet, then I don't know what's going to get through to you. And if you look at how many of these things began from 2021 to coincide in temporal association with this mass intervention, then you know it's 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 clear by now that there are there are significant problems and that those problems are being swept under the carpet. But what is also clear is that the evidence is growing, and there are more and more people willing to take this evidence into high places. Now, the difficulty is with this subject is that it's so heavily smeared. The Overton window is so narrow around the conversation around medical. And, and you might wonder if you're watching this for the first time, why, why doesn't he just say the V word? You can't say the V word. Like if you're new to the subject and you're curious about how censored this subject is, I can't say the V word. I can't even say the J word, the three letter J word that you could use to indicate the thing that happens, the, the actual indication. That's how narrow the Overton window is publicly on this conversation. Now, of course, if you weren't already aware as well, the mainstream media is heavily funded by the pharmaceutical industry and to the different differing degrees around the world. You know, in America, it's absolutely huge. And for those of you who live in America or visited America, you can't go a few minutes without a commercial break relating to a pharmaceutical product. Um, so there's this confluence of interests. It's, it's, it's a pharmaceutical industrial complex which is a polite way of saying a racket or a mafia. It's a medical mafia that has had such dominance over the last couple of years. And, you know, I appreciate I'm starting to sound like a radical, which is difficult, you know, it's difficult to maintain a sense of, you know, balanced communication. And therein is part of the problem because the scientists in the last couple of years have had to become activists. So scientists are becoming activists to get their message out there because the channels aren't listening, they're being smeared, and it's the same old rodeo. So, the question is, how do we therefore expand this Overton window? How many sacrifices are needed before people really start to take this seriously? Now, the good news is the public, in some ways, are voting with their feet. If you look at the take-up data around many of the medical interventions that are being repeatedly offered, despite you know this, you know the, 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 there was a communication coming out that the government would stop offering these things, it felt like 
you know, the classic sales technique that, you know, the off the, what, what do you call it? The reverse close where it's, you take the thing off the table to, to, to make people want it more because you can no longer have it. It's like the, the government was saying that, you know, these, these boosters are no longer going to be available. Lo and behold, there's more boosters and more, more interventions and the, the cash register keeps chiming. Um, but the big question, as I said, is how do we, how do we really start to get people to take this seriously? And, and, and as I said, you know, pe people are, Clear, clearly, the public are starting to ask questions, but 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 very quietly. Now, Andrew Bridgen, as we know, has been a lone warrior, really, uh, with this subject. You know, during the course of COVID, we at least had five or six prominent MPs who were vocal throughout this, but they've gone deathly silent. If you hadn't noticed, you know, and, and if if those MPs who were vocal during the last few years against lockdowns, if you if you are there in your constituency. Then it's important. I implore you to 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 pile pressure on them to join the fight because if any of you have seen, um, there's a great video by Derek Sivers which looks at how movements are made. You can look it up. The, go go onto YouTube and type in Dave, Derek Sivers S like Sivers like spelt like Silvers but without the L. Uh, how movements are made and it shows this crazy lone dancer in a field, literally dancing like crazy, looking like they're off their mind. But they're dancing away and having a wonderful time. And you can see them just by themselves. And everyone's looking at this crazy person for ages, thinking, what's going on? This guy's crazy. But then lo and behold, the courageous second dancer joins the party. And all of a sudden, you have two people dancing crazily together. And for a long time, it's still those two people. But then other people starting to look around saying, these guys are having a lot of fun. And then a third person joins. And it's still, you know, people are still looking on with skeptic, you know, skeptical minds. Um, but then, then the fourth person arrives and then there's a party and you watch this video, you see once the fourth person arrives, floodgates open and uh, all manner of people come in to dance. And before you know it, there's a rave. Now I use that analogy and I demonstrated this vis viscerally at the uh, Better Way conference a couple of years ago. I actually did this from stage to watch how it happened. We had the whole room jumping. Um, it takes that courageous first leader. But there's often a gap between that first leader stepping up and the second leader coming along. And Andrew Bridgen has been fighting continually on this subject right from the beginning uh, of this kind of period. Not right from the beginning of, of, of the last few years, but of this, this new, new period of activism. He's one of the first and only people in the UK and, and in some cases in the countries uh, around the world to have stood up against this uh, medical uh, tyranny. Uh, but he needs now that courageous second leader to join the party. Um, he desperately needs it because he's been smeared and, you know, the, uh, he's tarnished that he's a target. And as a result, the hard reality tonight, this debate hall, I'm sure, will be near empty, uh, regrettably, because it's it's one person who has developed a reputation of, of challenging the status quo and people don't want to go near him as a result you know no matter how hard he grips to the truth it's almost the harder he grips the further he pushes people away sadly and i have great respect and admiration for that courage but we desperately need courageous second leaders from the parliamentary uh, system and you know it's now is the time to put pressure this is our responsibility now the responsibility is on our shoulders to lobby our own representatives to join him in at least paying attention to at least pay attention to the conversation and the data um, it's it's it requires us to get that second, third, and fourth person to come and join the party. Otherwise, uh, Andrew will be fighting uh, as a lone warrior for for, for uh, months ahead. So it's down to us to 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 provide reliable information, and we also need to learn as a kind of community of of uh, activists, and we we have become activists. We need to look at how we communicate these delicate subject matters to 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 ears that may not be open and. Uh, you could also argue that it's futile trying to communicate to ears that aren't open. And, and the first instance is to try and find the mind, you know, find ways to find the open minds amongst the people. But but day by day, more and more people are recognizing what's happening. More and more people from the medical establishment are coming forward. And that's going to bring a new wave of voices, because even again, the same could be applied to doctors Robert Malone, um, Ryan Cole, um, Pierre Corey. You know, they've all been smeared in the same way. You know, they've, they've described as misinformationalists. You know, it's 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 very hard to get your message heard, no matter how calm uh, you, you remain. 
So uh, those further followers are required in order to, to progress this. So what will happen as a result of today's parliament uh, discussion, it's, ha it's happening right now. It's not being live streamed. I don't think we have any access to this material, but I look forward to seeing the reflections and, and, and how many of the uh, uh, MPs turned up and how many of the media showed up to be part of this. And even I couldn't get access to this and I consider myself to be a relatively, you know, significant uh, broadcaster on this space, you know, one of the first people to really address this issue. Um, now, as this is happening in the last week, as may have, you, you may have known, and we could, we'll do a larger feature on this, uh, data has emerged from New Zealand, uh, which is, again, pouring um, fuel onto the fire of the damage that these uh, interventions are causing. Now, there has there has been some controversy around the data in itself, not, a, not alone the... Uh, the way in which it was released, uh, but there are uh, skeptics around incomplete data sets and inaccurate assessment. So there are, it's, it's even though the data is available, there are, there are some complexities to it. But nonetheless, some vital data revealed, and it, it, it highlights how important it is for such data to be forthcoming. The whistleblower who actually released this data has was arrested. Uh, Barry Young was arrested on Sunday uh, yesterday. Uh, and he's now really he's going to be released on bail tomorrow, but he's facing potentially up to seven years imprisonment for uh, for releasing this data, vaccine database and making it public. And again, there's the photo, as I mentioned, uh, making him look, look, look like a criminal uh, classic uh, smearing. And then uh, this video here, let's play this. I think you wouldn't have heard the audio if you didn't see this one. Uh, let me see if we can now share this video. Uh, this is why we recently did the crowdfunder to up uh, up, up level our gear. <laughs> um, we haven't got it yet, so uh, still playing the amateur game. So thank you for bearing with me. Um, Tafatu Orders Chief People Officer Andrew Slater joins us. Andrew, good morning. Thanks for your time. Can I ask first, have you notified the Privacy Commissioner of this breach? Have you notified the Privacy Commissioner for this uh, breach? <laughs> uh, you're not concerned about what the data actually shows, which shows potentially incriminating data that absolutely confirms that this uh, medical intervention is causing people to die. You're worried about the privacy. Now, this was anonymized data, although, again, there is some um, potential uh, controversy around whether some... Um, uh, information relating to specific individuals was released. It was anonymized for, for publishing. Um, now, if you think that that, that comment's funny, then uh, check this one out later in the, um, uh, in the broadcast. Let me just find the point here. This one cracked me up. The size of the breach and the scale of the breach and the information being considered and the fact that you are still investigating it, Andrew, can we be assured that our information is safe? Oh dear, can we be assured? Can we be assured that our information is safe? You're worried about the safety of your information? This is how priorities are so wrong. You know, why would you be why would you be concerned about the safety of your 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 vaccination information? Wouldn't you be more concerned about the safety of the medical intervention itself, given what the data revealed? This is just insane. But let's not forget that the media channel One News is a state. Pay. It's a state. Uh, it's a state news channel in New, New Zealand. It's the equivalent of the BBC, you know. So it's that their, their interests are all converged around protecting the narratives. Now I'm going to con con conclude today's broadcast with this isn't new news. This is just a relevant point because uh, it follows into along to the story uh, tonight. There's there's uh, AstraZeneca are facing two London lawsuits. Uh, so AstraZeneca facing two uh, lawsuits in the United Kingdom. Two of many that will emerge looking at, uh, and then, again, the language, it's not in this article, but it's just fascinating to show um, that the, the language is turned to, I don't think it shows in this article. They're starting to describe it in the press as defective. You know, they're not, they're not, they're not touching the safety angle. They're just calling it defective, which is a, is a clever line. And maybe there's a, maybe there's a little wedge in the Overton window for ourselves there to start calling this thing defective to open up the, um, the conversation around how these things are have been greatly harmful and one of the worst medical interventions in in recent history if not all of human history so um let me know in the comments what do you think you know how do we expand this conversation how do we make sure uh, that this 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 subject is taken seriously the reality is you know nearly four years on now 
we're, we're still dealing with um, the ramifications of, of what's gone before us. And we, we cannot move forward until we have a proper uh, analysis uh, and accountability and justice for what's gone before us. It's, it's really important that this doesn't happen again. But the, the likelihood is that these lawsuits will either get blown away or uh, you know, you know, even even if they face huge fines, there's nothing to stop these organizations to continue doing what they always do. And the hard reality is their tentacles are so deeply entwined in the political system and the media ecosphere with, with all the fact checkers that this is an incredibly difficult subject to get beyond the Overton window. So how do we get beyond this idea of conspiracy theorists, misinformations? Tell me in the comments. Let me know your thoughts. And let's watch and see what happens. So right now, this uh, debate uh, discussion is happening in London right now. I'll give my further thoughts later on this week on, on what emerges. Thanks again for tuning in. If you haven't already, please do. Please subscribe to our mailing list. Go to danastongregory.com forward slash pandemic. It's the only way that we can guarantee that we can reach you with our content because once again, our content is being suppressed across all channels. We had we had full availability on Facebook again for about a month. And I don't know what I've said, but it's gone away again. And it's crickets. So if you're seeing this, you're one of the lucky few. Thanks very much for tuning in. Please hit the share button. Let's get this conversation out of this. Raise the awareness. It's our turn. It's time to play our part to raise uh, raise the noise on this subject and, and find our way to expand the conversation. Thanks again for tuning in. Apologies for the technical glitches there. 